Not good. 13.4 amps outside. Not good. No updates anymore for the older JK inverter BMSs anymore. Not good. Guys, welcome back to the off -grid garage here in not so sunny Australia. How do I turn this video into something positive now? Well, I've got two, actually three hidden features in the JK firmware, which I haven't shown you yet. Okay, but only two of them are actually positive. The third one is another bug I discovered and it's super annoying. So as we all know, if you have multiple batteries in parallel, yeah, only the master BMS is connected to the inverter or to the Victron system in this case and reports all the data to the inverter, requests charge voltage, float voltage, a maximum charge and also discharge current. And a few firmware update versions back. Jikong added the BMS status and also the status timer to the main screen of the app and also computer software. So we start the JK BMS software. We can see all our available BMSs and we select the one with the zero zero at the end. This is our master BMS out of these four batteries. And now down here we can see the charge status bulk and the charge status timer zero seconds yeah and obviously as i just said the bulk absorption float voltage and timers are only important to set for the uh, master bms right because this is connected via can or rs485 to your inverter then so this is where the communication between your battery stack and the inverter happens the master bms is the one which talks so now I have seen quite a few comments under my last videos and I've also received quite a few emails from people who are saying this is all not working. My BMS are not resetting to 100%. Even we have set the state of charge 100% voltage to 3.445 volts as in your videos, but my BMS is not resetting. And I've actually made a dedicated video about how this reset mechanic in the JK BMS works. I'll link this down below in the description. So very quickly here, you need to reach your 3.45 volts with your whole battery. So 3.45 times 16 is 55.2. When you reach that for a couple of seconds, the BMS actually starts absorbing and the timer runs, the RCV timer starts running. Once the timer has run out, the BMS checks again, is my voltage still high enough so I can actually conclude the battery is still 100% charged. And this is where the state of charge 100% voltage comes into play. Yeah. So after the timer runs out, the battery voltage needs to be at least on this set voltage or higher. So 3.445 times 16 makes uh, 55.12. So we charge to 55.2, the timer starts running and afterwards the voltage needs to be still higher than 55.12. And these parameters need to be set in the master as well as in the slave batteries. And this is what most people forget. They only think the master will talk to the inverter, which is correct, and take care of the state of charge of the voltages of the currents and everything else. But if you have multiple batteries in parallel and they all show a different state of charge, the master BMS will, of course, report an average of the state of charge to the inverter, right? And if only the master BMS resets to 100%, well, then you've got only one of your batteries on 100% and the other batteries are not on 100%. So the overall average across all your batteries is not 100% then. Even the master is on 100%. So you really need to ensure to set your RCV, your RCV timer, and also the state of charge 100% voltage correctly in the master BMS as well as the slave BMSs. Just a few updates ago, G Kong made this actually available and showed us what is the actual status of the BMS currently. Are we still in bulk, in absorption or even already in float? We didn't know. Yeah, but now we can see this with a charge status, bulk in this case. And the timer has not triggered because we haven't reached the 55.2 volts. So, but what about the slave BMSs? So far, the slave BMSs didn't have this functionality because Qigong thought, well, it is not important for the slave battery to show if we are in bulk, if the timer runs or something like this, because it's not the responsibility of a slave BMS 
to be in bulk or to report or to show a bulk absorption of load status. And I think this is where a lot of confusion comes from for users. Because you set this in your master BMS and you think, well, I have hit 100%, but all my other slave BMSs, they haven't reset to 100% yet. Why not? Because maybe you have different settings in your slave BMS than in your master, a different timer, a different RCV voltage, a different state of charge, 100% voltage. And then this slave BMS need to be triggered with these specific settings for this specific slave BMS. I think it was the last one or the one before the last one where Qi Kong said, well, it. let's show the BMS status and the timers for all BMSs, regardless if it's master or slave. Yeah, so we go back into one of the slaves, slave number one. This is the version 14 BMS. It connects and we can also see here a bulk and a charge status timer. Yeah, while well, this BMS here would not request these settings from your inverter, this is only what the master does. It still shows the settings here now in the status page of the app. So you as the user can now see if the requested charge voltage, the RCV timer and also the state of charge 100% voltage has been met. And only then your slave BMS will also reset to 100%. So this is more a cosmetic information for the slave BMSs. It is not really relevant for any control mechanism to your inverter. Only the master BMS takes care of that. But here in the Slave BMS, it is more a help to fine tune your setup and make sure all your BMSs in your different batteries are resetting to 100%. So the overall average of all battery state of charge shows actually 100% once the battery is full. So it is a bit of a troubleshooting feature actually, but I think it's very nice to have this feature now in all BMSs, Master and Slave. So in the second undocumented feature for all BMSs version 14, 15 and 16, 19 is when we go to settings and uh, put in our password, which is 111111, verify, thank you. And we now accidentally clicked off one of the buttons up here, lithium ion, lithium ion phosphate LTO. It immediately reset the whole settings to this specific uh, battery chemistry. Yeah. And this was always a total nightmare because it reset everything. It deleted all your history, like the state of charge measurement in your BMS. And more importantly, or more annoyingly, the cycle count of this battery was reset to zero. Now, what happens if I click on lithium ion? It actually comes up with a confirmation window. Yeah, please confirm again to change the parameters to lithium ion. No, no, I don't want to. I accidentally clicked on it. LTO, the same. Do you want to change to LTO? No, we don't. Lithium ion phosphate, we are on lithium ion phosphate already. Do you want it? No, 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 we don't. Yeah. Thankfully, we now got a confirmation window coming up and we need to confirm again that we really want to change the chemistry in our battery, which we probably never ever do, right? And the same works actually on the computer software as well. As soon as you put your password in and hit one of these uh, battery profile, battery chemistry buttons, it will come up with this confirmation window and you need to click on OK again to actually change the battery chemistry. So this is the second positive change we see in the last um, firmware upgrades for the JK inverter BMSs, all three, 14, 15 and 19. But now there is um, a very annoying bug still in this software and it must be there for forever. So as you can see, we are now 100% state of charge with this battery, which is not correct uh, anyway. And if you go back in settings and accidentally click on the battery capacity in ampere hours, yeah, it already sits correctly on 280 ampere hours for this specific battery here. If I click the OK button again, it will set the 280 ampere hours again reset your battery capacity, reset your state of charge and also reset your cycle count without a confirmation window. I'll do it. Yeah. So remaining battery 100% cycle count zero. If I click on OK, it just does a beep and we go back into controls and you can see now we are at 210.1 ampere hours remaining 75% and the cycle count has also reset to zero. Super annoying, right? Yeah, just a little click. That is not good. 
I've reported this already to Qigong and there will be a firm, firmware update for the version 19, BMS only of course. But just be aware and be very careful with this button because it resets all your statistics of your BMS. It's very annoying. And I don't know why I didn't see this before, right? It is very it is very easy to click on this button while scrolling up and down on the screen. And you just happen to click on this OK button and it does a quick beep in the BMS and resets everything. And then you wonder, hey, why is my battery only on 75% all of a sudden? What's going on here? Not good. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your fantastic, amazing support here on the channel. I really appreciate all the donations or becoming a channel member. You're getting some extra footage from time to time, leaving nice comments and sharing these videos everywhere. Thank you so very much. This all makes this possible here. And until the next video, guys, when we see how the version 19, 14 and 15 of the BMS work together to do that. Until then, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. <laughs>